This is higher straight line and what we're looking at is the gradient of uh, a line or we're looking at the angle um, a line makes with the OX uh, axis. Okay, just the X axis basically. Right, let, let's look at a couple of uh, simple things that are here. And the first things that I'm going to look at will be the gradient of the first line that I've got there. So the gradient of the first line, what I have is, I'm just going to use the simple formula. And I'm going to go for the vertical over the horizontal. Okay, so what I can see here is that's going to be the vertical. This one here will be my horizontal line. So the vertical divided by the horizontal will give me 5 divided by 5, and that's going to simply be a gradient of 1. Okay, so once I do that gradient, what I can do is I can look at part B, and I can use the trig ratios to find out the size of the angle that's X in here. So if I go to try and do that, what I can do is I can label up my triangle with the... Uh, hypotenuse, this will be my hypotenuse here, okay, hypotenuse, this here over here will be the opposite, because that's right opposite the angle, and the other side that's left will be the adjacent side, okay, so that's me labelled up the triangle as if I was going to do some Sokotoa work. So what I'd do is I'd write down the Sokotoa for, to work out the trig ratio I'm going to use, and I know the opposite and I know the adjacent, so I'll take the opposite, and the adjacent, and the one that's uh, got the three, the two ticks at it, sorry, is going to be the, the, the tan ratio. So what I'll do there is then I'll use the tan ratio. So tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So when I put in my values for the opposite, I've got five. The adjacent is going to be five also. So that's going to be equal to one. Now what I really should see here is that um, the opposite over the adjacent is the same as the vertical over the horizontal. And the vertical over the horizontal, remember, worked out the gradient for me. So what I could do is here use a different formula that's going to help me work out the angle that uh, this line makes with the horizontal. So that's going to be tan theta, just theta being a Greek letter, is equal to the gradient. So that's a formula that we're going to, going to start using here. Right, so now what I'll do is I'll substitute in the values. So it's tan x I'm going to try and work out. So tan x is equal to, and the gradient I've got is 1. So x is going to be equal to the inverse tan. So remember when we're working out uh, an angle, just take the inverse or shift, shift tan of 1. And from there, I can see that x is going to be equal to 45 degrees. So I can use that in my calculator or use the table of exact values to try and work out that, uh, that answer that's there. Okay, what, what you can do is uh, you can try to do questions part 2 and 3 and try to use the tan theta equals m formula to try and work out the answer to the angle that's going to be in here and here. And remember, it's the angle that's going to be anti-clockwise from the horizontal. Okay, freeze the video and uh, I'll give you the answers in a second. Okay, so the gradient of this line here, what we can see is it's going to be vertical over horizontal and that's just going to be 3 over 6 which gives me a, a half as the gradient. If I use tan theta uh, is equal to the gradient, I'll be substituting in the half in where I substituted 1, and what I should get out here is y is going to be equal to, and it's going to be 26.6 degrees, to one decimal place. If I look at part 3, the answer for that, the gradient, is just going to be equal to 7 over 2. So that was vertical over horizontal, 7 over 2 would be my gradient. And if I work out the angle for z, so z is going to be equal to 74.1 degrees. Okay. Right, so, so that's these parts uh, complete just now. What I'll do is I'll move on to using the, uh, the gradient formula that you've learned in uh, National 5. So it's uh, the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Right, the coordinates of g 
there would be 2, 3. So I'll just write these in just now. So that's 2, 3. The coordinates down here at the origin are going to be 0, 0. Okay? So that will be O. What I'll do is I'll work out the gradient of the O, G line. And I'll use Y2 minus Y1 all over X2 minus X1. So that's going to be 3 minus 0 because that's going to be my x1, my y1. That'll be my x2, my y2. That's all going to be divided by 2, take away 0. So from there, I can see that my gradient is going to be 3 over 2. Or I could have looked at the, the vertical over the horizontal to work that one out there. Right, so straight away when I'm trying to work out this angle that's here, the angle that's a degrees, um, what I'll do from that is I'll work out the using the formula. So tan theta is equal to m. So substituting my values in, what I've got is tan of a degrees is going to be equal to 3 upon 2. And so taking the shift of that, or the inverse tan of 3 over 2, file it into the calculator. And what I should get out is 56.3 degrees. So A is going to be equal to 56.3 degrees. I'll let you try this one here. So freeze the video and go ahead and do that one. Okay, from here I know that the gradient of D E is going to be equal to 1. Okay, and the value of the angle, once I work this through, B is going to be equal to 45 degrees. Okay, so that will be that part complete there. Yeah. Right, so what if we've got a, a line sloping from left to right and it's going downwards? So that's going to be a negative gradient that we're going to have there. So let's see what we're going to have to do to, to work out this, this one here. So looking at the coordinates that I've got here, the coordinates will help me work out the gradient. So what I've got here is coordinates will be 1, 0, and the coordinate here will be 0, 2. So I'm going to use these coordinates to work out my gradient. So let's work out the gradient of the line. So the gradient is going to be equal to y2 minus y1, all over x2 minus x1. Substituting my points in, let's go for this point first, so 0 minus 2. And that will be all divided by 1 minus 0. That will work out to be minus 2 over 1. So my gradient is going to be minus 2. Okay. So what I'd then do is I'd uh, work out the tan theta is equal to my gradient. So that's the formula that I'm going to try and use. And what we'll do here is substitute my values in. So tan theta is going to be equal to minus 2. So remember when we get a negative here, when we get a negative, what we'll do from that is we'll consider the cast table. So that's all sine, tan and cos. And where that's negative, so tan would normally po be positive in all quadrant, in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 3. So that's where it would be positive. Because that's negative, we're looking for a value here and we would be looking for a value there. But normally what we're doing here is, when we're working out this angle, we're looking for an angle that's in the second quadrant. Okay, it's an obtuse angle, and it's only that one angle that I need there. So, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the acute angle. So, working out the acute angle, I'll go for, uh, so, tan theta is going to be equal to 2. So, I've dropped that minus sign to work out the acute angle. So theta is going to be equal to the inverse tan of 2, and from there I've got theta being equal to 63.4 degrees. Just as you punch that into your calculator. So to work out the quadrant 2 answer, so quadrant 2, and this is the answer that I'm really interested in, because what that will do is that will give me the value of this angle here, which will be C, so C is going to be equal to 180 minus this angle that's here. And what that will give me will be an answer of 116.6 degrees. Okay. And that will be that question complete. 
Right, finally, just one last thing that we're going to look at on gradient. And uh, if I look at the gradient of a line, similar to the distance formula and the midpoint, we may have to work out a missing coordinate, possibly, within this type of work that we're doing here. Right, so all I'm going to do again is use the, the formula that I've got and substitute the values that I know. And I'll have one missing value, so from there I can always solve that when I've only got one missing. So starting with this formula here, and knowing that the gradient equals 2, I'm going to substitute 2 in where m is. I'm then going to put uh, my coordinates, so I'll start with this one being x1, that one being y1, this one here being x2, this one here y2. So let's start with that. So y2 is equal to 5, I'm going to substitute k from that. That's all going to be go over x2, which is 1, and I'll substitute 3, it is subtract 3 from that. Right, let's just try and gather this together a bit. So that's going to be 2, that's going to be 5 minus k on the top, that's going to be minus 2. Right, to sort this wee bit out here, I'm going to multiply the 2 by minus 2, and that'll get rid of that number from the bottom. Okay, so that gives me minus 4 on the left-hand side is equal to 5 minus k. Taking that 5 over gives me minus 9 is equal to minus k. So therefore, what I've got is, so minus k equals minus 9, k must be equal to 9. And that's going to be that complete. Now what I'd like you to do is to try questions 2, 3 and 4. Try and work these through and get the answers for the missing value. What I'd like you to do is once you've found that missing value, substitute it back into the equation at the top here and make sure your gradient works out to be either a third, uh, 4 over 3 or minus 2 over 5. So that's a good way for you to check that to see if you've got your answer correct. Further work to do here on gradients and angles is in the Maths and Action textbook. Go to page 5 and page 6 and do the questions that I've uh, listed here. So different questions, we're looking at just uh, simple gradient questions, questions dealing with parallelograms and distance formula, trapeziums, gradients and angles, angles in a triangle and also some uh, questions in context where you'd see the, the uh, looking at the angle and the gradient of uh, a roof space. Okay, so hopefully this has helped you catch up with the uh, gradient of a straight line.